Module 2, problem number 11. Suppose the lengths of the pregnancies of a certain animal are approximately normally distributed with a mean mu equal to 284 days and standard deviation sigma equal to 26 days. Complete parts A through F below. A, what is the probability that a randomly selected pregnancy lasts less than 276 days? So now notice we have this population of this animal, whatever animal it is, where the mean or average pregnancy lasts 284 days with a standard deviation of 26. We're trying to figure out what's the likelihood or the probability that if we were to randomly select one of those animals, that its pregnancy lasted less than 276 days. So there's two ways to do this. One, we can do it manually where we have to standardize X, right? That's when we convert X to Z and then use that standard normal distribution table. And I did walk through that in problem number nine in an announcement earlier this week. Now, I want to show you guys how to do it in StackCrunch, which I also showed you in problem number nine. But I want to show it here because it does give a nice graphical representation of what we're looking at in the distribution. So let's go to question help, stack crunch. Okay, now stack crunch is open. Let's make this a little smaller so we can see more. Now within stack crunch, most of what you guys are going to be using is stat or graph and a little bit in data. But under stat, let's go to calculators. We're going to go down to normal. And see, we see that nice standard normal curve. How do we know this is standard normal and not just normal? Because the mean is zero and standard deviation is one. See here we have the probability that X is less than or equal to zero, and it gives you right here, it's 0.5. Now, if I want to know the probability that X is greater than or equal to zero, I can just flip that. Or if I wanted to know what it was between these two values. Um, on a side note, that's the central limit theorem, or not central limit, that's the empirical Rule, remember that 68% falls between one standard deviation. Anyway, now, how do we switch this? Because we don't have a standard normal um, distribution. We have a normal distribution. Again, you could convert X to Z, or you can just input them here. We were given the, prop the population mean as 284 and the standard deviation of 26. Now, I have this set up for between, but we want to do standard because we want to do less than a problem here says what is the probability that a randomly selected pregnancy lasts less than 276 days so we're going to put 276 right here and click compute and it gives us look at that and we can see it which is what's great you can see right here this is where that x value is 276 it's that shaded area to the left now if it asked for the pregnancy greater than 276 you could flip that around and click compute Let's go ahead and put our answer in. So it says four decimal places. So we have 0.3792. When we round, notice that one rounds up to a two. Check answer. Good job. All right, interpret this probability. Select the correct choice below and fill in the answer box within your choice. So there's three choices here. The first part is all the same. It says if 100, pregnancy, 100 pregnant individuals were selected independently from this population, we would expect blank pregnancies to last less than 276, to last exactly 276, or to last more than 276. Now we just found this to be less than 276, so we know we're looking at less than. So we know right off the bat that C is our answer, because that less than corresponds to the probability we just found. Now how do I know if I have 100, how do I know, what, what, how many would I expect? Well the probability is that 0.3792. And you remember last week we talked about that expected count. That expected count is the probability times the number, right? That P times N. So we have 100 here for our number, 100 times that probability. When we multiply 100 by that, we get 37.9, and that rounds us up to 38. Good job. So 38 was our answer there. Okay. Part B. Suppose a random sample of 21 pregnancies is obtained. Describe the sampling distribution of the sample mean length of pregnancies. Now remember, what did we learn this week? We learned the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem told us that the distribution of that sample mean, X bar, would be approximately normal, regardless of the distribution of the underlying um, variable or population. So we're going to say normal. Now one of the other things that we learned is that the mean is the same. So the mean of X bar is the same as the mean of the original. So that's 284. Now, I will say this. The one thing we did learn is that the mean 
of x bar, excuse me, the standard deviation of x bar is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So that means that this is going to be a little different than our standard deviation. So we need to find, we were given our standard deviation is 26 and our n here is 21. So let's go back. We have, in this case, 21 divided by the square root of, I think I got, I got that wrong, sorry, that's 26. 26 divided by the square root of 21. Now, a couple, or a little bit of you have asked about the calculator. You don't need a calculator, you can just, I just Googled scientific calculator and this is the first one that came up. So let's go ahead and use that. So we have 26 divided by the square root of 21 equals, 5.6737 when we round, and this says four decimal places. So our new standard deviation, we're gonna put 5.6737. You can see that six rounds up to a seven because of that. So let's check our answer. Excellent. What is the probability that a random sample of 21 pregnancies has a mean gestation period of 276 days or less? Notice the difference up here we were looking at a randomly selected pregnancy. Now we're looking to see what is the probability that a random sample of 21 has a mean of 276 or less. So we're kind of doing the same thing, but now we have a new um, standard deviation for this sample. So let's go ahead and put this in. We can leave that population mean because it's the same for the mean of X bar, but here we need to put in our new number. So what did we get? We got 5.6. 737, seven, and we're still looking for that mean to be less than 276. Let's click compute. So notice that number is a lot smaller, and that's what part of that is because we have a smaller standard deviation. So more, more, our distribution is going to be a little tighter around that mean. So you would expect fewer things to be in the tails. It's fewer frequencies in the tail. So we're going to do 0 0.0793 for four decimal places, right? One, two, three, four. Let's check our answer. Excellent. Okay, now we need to look at the interpretation. It's going to be very similar to what we did in part B. It says interpret this probability. Select the correct choice below and fill in the answer box with your choice. So again, the beginning part's the same. If 100 independent random samples of size n equals 21 pregnancies were obtained from this population, we would expect blank samples to have a sample mean of 276 or more, 276 or less, and exactly 276. Again, just like before, we right here, this is our tip. We already found that probability for less than. So we know B is our answer. Here we have 100 independent samples, and here we have our number right here. So we have to multiply this by 100 again, just like we did before, because it's our expected value. So when we multiply this by 100, we get 7.9. So we round that up to 8. Check our answer. Nice work. Just chugging through this one, right? We've still got a few more parts. What is the probability that a random sample of 51 pregnancies has a mean gestation period of 276 or less? So now what's the difference between this and what we just did? The sample size. So what does that mean? When we have that sample size, we need to find a new, our new standard deviation. Again, the mean stays the same, right? So let's do this. We're going to erase this part. So our population is still 26, our population, that sigma from or the original population. And our sample, what are we looking for? A sample of 51 pregnancies. So our new N is 51. So now let's put that into our calculator. So we have 26 divided by the square root of 51. Enter, and that's gonna give us, what do we have? 3.6407 when we round it to four places. So let's put that in here, 3.6407, check answer. Oops, let's see what we messed up. I'm sure I made a small mistake somewhere. 26 divided by 6407. What I did there is I accidentally put in, that's our standard deviation, I'm sorry about that. So we need to go to stat crunch <laughs> and put that in here. So we have 3.6407 and we're still looking for that sample mean to be less than 276 so we click compute and our new probability which is what I should have put in here was 0 0.01333 
three. Oops, we're gonna end up with four zero because look, that nine keeps rounding up. So we end up with 0 0.0140. Zero. Let's check our answer. Fantastic. All right, let's interpret this. Interpret this probability. Select the correct choice below. So again, the beginning's the same. If 100 independent random samples of size n equals 51 pregnancies were obtained from this population, we would expect blank samples to have a sample mean of exactly 276, 276 or less, and 276 or more. Well, just like with the other ones, we found that probability for 276, and we have to multiply this by 100. When we multiply that by 100, the decimal goes here. We have 1.4. And that rounds to one for the nearest integer. Well done. All right, what might you conclude if a random sample of 51 pregnancies resulted in a mean gestation period of 276 or less? Well, the mean of the popular, or the sample mean we would expect, the mean of this, the, that mu x bar, we would expect 284. So if we see 276 or less, that would be kind of unusual. That's pretty low. That probability is very low. We would not expect that. So that result would be unusual. So the sample likely came from a population whose mean gestation period is actually less than 284 days. So it means that that population probably didn't actually have a mean of 284. So let's check the answer. Good job. All right, what is the probability a random sample of size 17 will have a mean gestation period within 12 days of the mean? When it says within 12 days, that now tells us in this, in this way, tells us that we're looking at that between this, this right here. What we're looking at is to have a line on two sides of that, and it says 12. So it's gonna be 284 plus 12 and 284 minus 12. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and put in that 284 minus 12 is 272, and that 284 plus 12 is gonna give us 296. So, but now we need to find our new standard deviation, right? So we don't have one for 17 yet, we did 21. So let's go back and do our calculations for that standard deviation. Let's erase all this. So we're gonna have, again, that 26 stays the same, but our N down here on the bottom is 17. Let's put it into our calculator. So we have 26 divided by the square root of 17. Hit enter, that gives us about 6.305. 9, that's four decimal places, 1, 2, 3, 4, there we go. So we need to put that into StatCrunch so that we can see what the probability is. So here we have 6.3059, and I want to point out too, you notice that the bigger sample sizes, the n equals 51, had a lower standard deviation, whereas the smaller sample size has higher standard deviation, and that's because that means that our spread or the width of that middle section is going to get wider with lower um, sample size. Okay, so let's go ahead and click compute. Notice I had those betweens already in there and it's a nice graphical representation of what we're looking at. So that means we expect it. Let's see, it's one, two, three, four. So we're going to put in 0.9430. Because notice that that nine gets rounded up because that five, so that gives us nine, four, three, zero. Let's check our answer. Fantastic. I know that was a long one and there was a lot going on in that problem. So if you have any questions about any of those parts or how to interpret it, let me know and I'm more than happy to help.